of all of us agreeing. I'll just read it. In the course of performing our core duty to administer justice, quote, in accordance with the Constitution of the Islamic Republic of Pakistan and the law, unquote, we <coughs> judges are bound to, quote, do right to all manner of people according to law without fear or favor, affection or ill will. This is our oath of office as prescribed in the Constitution Third Schedule. There have been some cases in our judicial history that created a public perception that either fear or favor deterred the performance of a duty to administer justice in accordance with the law. We must, therefore, be willing to confront our past missteps and fallibilities with humility in the spirit of self-accountability and as a testament to our commitment to ensure that justice shall be served with unwavering integrity and fidelity to the law. We cannot correct ourselves and progress in the right direction until we acknowledge our past mistakes. The advisory jurisdiction under Article 186 of the Constitution requires this court to render an opinion on any, quote, question of law, unquote, of public importance referred to by the President. To us, the question of law in essence is whether the requirements of due process and fair trial were complied with in the murder trial of Mr. Zulfikar Ali Bhutto, here and after Mr. Bhutto the former Prime Minister of Pakistan by the trial court, which was the Lahore High Court, and the appellate court, which was this court. This question we approach and answer considering whether the trial court and the appellate court attended to and dealt with the requirements of due process and fair trial. The reference filed by the President of Pakistan has provided us an opportunity to reflect upon the proceedings of the trial, conviction and death sentence of Mr. Bhutto under the regime of the military dictator General Ziaul Haq. The reference was filed during the government of the political party founded by Mr. Bhutto, but the successive governments of other major political parties carried forward this inquiry and did not opt to withdraw the reference, which included the, when we were hearing the matter, the caretaker government. This collective interest reflects the widespread desire of the people of Pakistan to seek the opinion of this court on whether Mr. Bhutto was afforded a fair trial and due process for his trial for the murder of Mr. Muhammad Ahmad Khan Kasuri. With the able assistance of the eminent legal minds of the country, we, for the reasons to be recorded later, and subject to amplifications and explanations made therein, render an opinion on the referred questions in the following terms. I'll read the questions, the number of five questions. Whether the decision of the Lahore High Court as well as the Supreme Court of Pakistan in the murder trial against Shahid Zulfikar Ali Bhutto meets the requirements of fundamental rights as guaranteed under Article 4, sub Articles 1 and 2A, Article 8, 9, 10A, due process, and Article 14 20, and 25 of the Constitution. If it does not, its effect and consequences. I should clarify these questions were already framed when we heard the matter. And our opinion is as under. The proceedings of the trial by the Lahore High Court and of the appeal by the Supreme Court of Pakistan do not meet the requirements of the fundamental right to a fair trial and due process enshrined in Articles 4 and 9 of the Constitution and later guaranteed as a separate and independent fundamental right under Article 10A of the Constitution. At the relevant time, Article 10A wasn't part of the Constitution, but the principles enunciated therein have always been part of our jurisprudence. The second part of the opinion of this question is the question and the, the Constitution and the law do not provide a mechanism to set aside the judgment whereby Mr. Bhutto was convicted and sentenced. The said judgment attained finality after the dismissal of the review petition by this court. Question number two was whether the conviction leading to execution of Shahid Zulfikari Bhutto could be termed as a decision of the Supreme Court binding on all courts being based upon or a and our opinion is, reference questions do not specify the principle of law enunciated by this court in the Zulfikar Ali Bhutto case regarding which our opinion is sought. 
Therefore, it cannot be answered whether any principle of law enunciated in Zulfiqar Ali Bhutto case has already been descended to or overruled. Questions number three and five we have taken together, and these are respectively whether in the peculiar circumstances of this case awarding and maintaining of the death sentence was justified or it could amount to deliberate murder keeping in view the glaring bias against Shahid Zulfikar Ali Bhutto and question 5 was whether on the basis of conclusions arrived at and inferences drawn from the evidence material in the case an order for conviction and sentence against Shahid Zulfikar Ali Bhutto could have been recorded in our opinion is in its advisory jurisdiction under Article 186 of the Constitution, this court cannot reappraise the evidence and undo the decision of the case. However, in our detailed reasons, we shall identify the major constitutional and legal lapses that had occurred with regard to fair trial and due process. So the, we did not find that the fair trial and due process requirements were met. So that's what we have really focused on. Question number four referred to Islamic injunctions and our opinion we kept asking repeatedly that we needed assistance but was not rendered so our opinion is we are not we were not rendered any assistance on this question therefore it would be inappropriate to render an opinion on the Islamic aspects so basically the our opinion is that the the late Mr. Zulfikar Ali Bhutto did not get a fair trial and it was not in accordance with the constitution requirement of due process. <laughs> Try to have it rendered in Urdu as well and put up this on the website. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.